Hey, what's up? It's Fast the Magician with a really cool video I hope is going to educate and help people that I've been wanting to make for a while. And this resorts back to a very specific conversation I had with a magician a long time ago that I went up to New York to meet. So first things first, I know I haven't posted anything in a while. That is because I've been so busy with preparing for the hike that I'm doing that I haven't really had time to do much of anything else, as I said. But as springtime comes up and summertime comes up, I will be going back out to do magic. I haven't stopped doing it, but I wanted to give this piece of information. So <laughs> during the wintertime, many of you don't know, I just want to get this out of the way. I don't get a haircut. My hair is a complete mess. <laughs> so I'm wearing my hat in this video for that reason, because again, it's mainly because I've been prepping for the hike I've been doing. So anyway, um, you can look at that on... Uh, YouTube, because I have episodes one through six up for a series called A Journey in the Making that goes over everything. All right, let me get into this video. The point of this video is to help people out that may be having a problem with this by giving myself as an example, which I always do, to show that people at my level and above are not immune to stuff like this. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Uh, it's no secret that I have a problem and a bunch of other other of us magicians have a problem with the way the magic community is due to corporate greed. I've already gone over that in a few other videos. But that ties in with this. <clears throat> and so if you've ever run into this situation, hopefully this video will help you. And that is names of tricks or names of moves. Now, I to bring up the conversation I had with a magician in New York is everybody knows the quality of my stuff. They know exactly what I can do. They know um, my, my art. I dedicate myself to my art, so I take it seriously. And they know that I always say history is important. And, you know, it's good to know things. However, corporate greed has gotten into the way of everything where it's kind of become a jumbled mess. And this is one of the reasons I had made the presentation video regarding all for collectors. And it's that type of um, issues that I have, which again, I wasn't exposing anything, but my point was, is I wanted people to see that when corporate greed takes over, this is what I was talking about. Now, again, I want to be clear, there's really nothing wrong with corporate greed, except when you get into these specific situations. So the conversation I had with one of the magicians is we were discussing people and names of moves. And I'm like, I don't know what that move is. And he asked me, how do you know how to do all this stuff and, but you don't know the names of these moves. So I'm going to clarify that. And hopefully if you've ever run into people trying to down talk you about, oh, you know, well, you don't know the name of this move. All right. Once again, names of moves are important. The history is important. But because corporate greed has taken over, you don't actually know what is correct and what isn't. It may be correct. But for me personally, I just stop paying attention to the names of things, because you have people taking credit for other people's stuff. You have people changing the names of moves and then you have corporate pumping it out. So you don't want to know whether what anybody's even saying is true. And you can even point to a book that says, well, this person said it. Well, I have found out information that was in that book was not quite correct because they didn't credit the original user. A prime example of this is the crazy man's handcuffs. And one of the videos I had made said um, something I've been wanting to address for a while, or I've been wanting to address with this. In that video, I had used crazy man's handcuffs as the example and said, you know, Michael Lamar basically, you know, created this, to which I was corrected. And most people don't like being corrected, but I have no problems being corrected because I like to give proper information. If that entails me learning something, so be it. Deal with it. But the point I'm making here is, for the longest time, I never knew a uh, person named Arthur Setterington had actually created that trick and Michael Lamar had just made it famous. So here all along I had been saying stuff that Michael Lamar had doing it, not even knowing that I was giving incorrect information, which kind of irritated me. It was basically... Um, a while ago where I just stopped paying attention to the names of moves and who created it because the information is so jumbled the way corporate is now. It's just out of control. So again, this led into the question of the person asking me, is like, how do you know all this stuff but you don't even know the names of these moves? That's the reasoning behind it. So if you're ever pressured into, well, you're not a real good magician because you don't know the names of the moves, at this point, 
the information may be correct, but it's almost next to impossible to find it out. Even if somebody pulls out a book, like the Royal Road to Car, I'm sorry, not the Royal Road to Car Magic, um, Expert at the Car Table. There's agreements with that, but that book's been rewritten and there's been stuff that's been put back into that and taken out or whatever it is. Not that that's bad, but it's just the point here is just that you're getting information from other people that are getting information. And it's like nobody knows who wrote that book. Is Erdenay's a real person? Nobody seems to be able to answer that. So who wrote the book at this point basically becomes pointless. It's a cool topic to talk about, but the information in the book is more important than did somebody, is that an actual person and things like that. So my point was the information is important, but when it comes down to the names of the moves, that's only relevant to who you're talking to. And again, I was talking to somebody who was familiar with the current stuff, but I had learned old school. So some of the names of the stuff that, that they were talking about were two completely different names talking about the same thing, or I didn't know what they were calling it because I just stopped. I honestly stopped caring about the names of this. Furthermore, I have a habit of taking tricks and I purposely rename them. And the reason why is because social media was exposing too much shit. And I don't want that. I'm kind of using that to keep the secret there. But if it's a if it's like a store-bought trick or anything else like that, such as Ultra Collectors, I will specifically say the name. But if it's a trick I found that I found really good, I won't I'll I'll literally change the name of it so nobody can find it. That's just a common tactic that magicians who want to protect the art do. Um the other thing here that I was gonna mention is the situation that came up, sorry, the situation that came up inside the Ultra Collectors video I made about the presentation. And I had said that I used a riffle force in that video to get the card out. Then a bunch of people started saying, well, that's not a ripple riffle force, that's a slip force. And that's when I just basically stopped talking to people because people... I can't remember if I said this in another video, but if not, I'm going to say it now. And if I did, I apologize for saying it uh, again. But I want to make it clear that if somebody's coming at you with, well, you don't know the names of this, so you're not that good. Take a look at me. I don't know the names of some of this stuff. And even I do it. I just because I understand the art. But you can't argue with me about me not being a magician because I have so much knowledge in me. And because I was, I was basically taught hands on. Everybody learns from somebody. No matter who you are, you always have a mentor and you always have somebody that's better than you that you want to learn from. It's just when you get to the level that I'm at or some of the people above me are at, you just stop paying attention to certain people. Like you'll follow what they do and you'll see their tricks, but you have the knowledge on how to take the trick that they're doing and make it superior. So in that regard, the people you're watching tricks from that are just doing card tricks. They didn't create it. They're just showing it and that's it. You're taking a trick that they somebody else learned from somebody else, from somebody else, from somebody else, and you're taking it. So there's no reason to give the person credit for that. It's not that you don't, oh, where did I learn this? I'm not going to tell people where I'm getting my stuff from. It's just not going to happen because there's too many people exposing stuff, and it's stuff that I do. This is why I usually never make tutorials on this and why I got a ration of shit for doing the McDonald's Aces. In the end, I can handle that because I know what I'm doing. Um, I understand the consequences of it. And I explain exactly why I did it. Doesn't excuse that I did it, but I don't want to say I'm I'm kind of forgiven for that because the level that I'm at is is kind of people are understanding. So I'm not some random person that just came out of nowhere. But back to what I was saying about the um, the riffle force. Okay, the riffle force is the name of the force. The move you do in the force has a different name. So people are combining and splicing together the actual move with the name, which they're two completely different things. And so this is what I'm getting at about the level of knowledge. People are just trying to generalize stuff and get semantic. I don't want to say get semantical, but they're arguing irrelevant points because the name of a move isn't in is it's important, but the history of it is is important as well. But if you can't get a bead on who's doing what or what the name is or whatever it is has been changed. That's it. So again, with the riffle force, a riffle force is when you riffle. That's the name of it. The move you do to do the force when you're doing it is a totally separate thing. So in this particular case, somebody's like, well, you did a slip force. No, I did a riffle force and I used a slip move to get the card out. This is the difference, and this is why I get into these. If you're going to get technical, know what you're arguing about or, or, or you're or debating about. Ripple force is anytime you ripple through the deck. 
Now, you can get a card out of that deck any way you want. The move is you riffled to get to the point. Okay? That's what that's how this works. And so I again I want to be clear. History is important and so are the names. But for me personally, at this point, I don't believe half the stuff that comes out of anybody's mouth in corporate because it's all greed. I've gone over this before and explained why. Now, um, if I want to know about a move to discuss it, I'll adjust and say, okay, yeah, this move, because I know that's what they're going to understand. I will also make it a point that I don't agree with it, but if that's what's got to be called, that's fine. I mean, these are nitpicky things that, you know, magicians get into with other magicians. You wouldn't say this out in public like this. I just wanted to give this, you know, video um, out. I want to put, put this video out there because I want to help people um, because people start targeting people with this. Again, it's like, how do you not know you, blah, 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 you didn't do this? And how do you not know the name of this? As if that matters. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't. But again, they you can't really cl cl categorize me in that because you could, everybody knows that's watched my stuff. And even the people that ask me, it's like, you don't know the moves. They just don't pay it. They, they know that I know what I'm doing. And so they understand the names of it, but I wanted to clarify why I just don't, I, I stop paying attention to that because I don't trust half of the stuff that corporate's doing. And that's where most of this stuff is coming from. Corporate's putting out books. They're changing the names of stuff. They're not giving credit to the proper people. They're doing stuff that's disingenuous to their customers and things like that. So my point is, is I just want to make sure that when you do this and this is what you encounter, don't feel bad. Just agree, nod, do whatever. That's it. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Spasm and Justin signing out. Have a good one.